Well, Bill, thanks for, for teaching us this weekend. Um, I've been loving this series, and today was uh, another special uh, special moment in it, and you're talking about proclamation. And um, uh, one of the things we wanted to try this weekend is doing something like a cutting room floor. Um, when we, we were talking, you said you had 50-something pages of notes mm -hmm. that you whittled down to, was it 13. 13 pages, just so that we wouldn't be here for six hours of teaching. I'm sure it would be good, but I don't know if we could all stay focused that long. I wouldn't but, be that interested that long. <laughs> so we wanted to know, um, there's got to be some stuff that you cut out sure. that was... Uh, tough to, to sure. not include because there was other better stuff. So maybe why don't you just start with one of those things and then sure. I'll follow up with a few other questions and we might have some people contribute online sure. from online as well. So Well, when you talk about Jesus coming to proclaim the kingdom for the poor and the oppressed and the blind and the captives and to declare the season of God's grace and favor, I mean, how many illustrations could we give for that? Right. You know, so I, I just, I went through the Gospels and read Luke's gospel, because that's what we're in, and I and I just copied some of those in. Just 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 mention the names, yeah. just out of Luke's gospel alone, yeah. and and then one from John. But I mean, we could have elaborated on all of that. And then in the book of Acts, we could have gone through and found all kinds of illustrations there mm -hmm. about what it looks like to proclaim God right. and have God's favor. And how many stories could we tell in our own church? Totally, there's hundreds of them that we could tell about the favor of God. I do worry that people don't know it or recognize it all the time, but it's just yeah. it's just there. And so I, I just minim I didn't minimize the favor, I just minimized the illustrations. There you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was overwhelming to hear such a rapid pace of them. And I love how you included that even Luke was saying there was way too many. Yeah, we <laughs> so we, we cut down on Luke's story, but Luke had too many he cut down he on. He couldn't do it all so either, exactly. That's really good. And exactly. when we were setting up and just getting ready for this, you were mentioning that just... Um, you, you alluded to it for a little bit, but you didn't have the time to expand on it. Just talking about how that changes. for If we're following Christ, yeah. um, this kind of concept of understanding what we're, what we're proclaiming it changes how we're there for people. Yes. And, and it changes how we share, basically, yes. how we proclaim. Yes. So expand a bit on that. How do you see that being something maybe we can be better at as followers sure. of Christ? Yeah, I, I really believe the culture has changed dramatically. When I first came into the kingdom a long time ago, way back with Noah and the Ark almost, you know, everybody preached and thought, that's how you did it, knocked on doors and did strange things, stood in street corners and yelled. Those days are over, and I'm so glad they are, because they didn't work <laughs> anyway really that much. But I just, I think in this culture, we need to be available to people, hmm. both inside the family of God and outside. And if we could just be available, and I'm often intrigued by... If, if we are, how many people call and ask for help and want prayer or want to be talked, just want to talk? Or So I've had three or four of those this week already just mm. by being available. And I don't have all the answers by any means, but mm. I've really worked hard to be available to people. And they take advantage of that. And I'm thankful for that. I don't mean advantage in a negative way, but a positive way. That's, that's beautiful. And, and I think when it comes to Alpha, that's one of the great things we can do. We can, we can just be available to people, but have specific people in mind mm. that we can invite and welcome into a program where they can really have a chance to deal with the hard questions of their own life and life period. And right. it's just a great, a great tool that we're presenting and providing in our church. And yep. yeah, just be available. And Alpha is kind of that, that um, space, you know, especially yeah. for people. For, for those of us who aren't used to having that kind of conversation yeah. just sets the table for us. It does. And, it just and, sets it up. We yeah. just, yeah, we just have to make sure we don't have all the answers. We just have to come right. and be listeners and learners ourselves and yeah. keep growing. And so what a great privilege. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Can I, can we dive into, I don't know if you could just explore one of those conversations you had this week and maybe just give us a couple of steps of like, this is what you did to be available. Because sometimes when we hear that, our hearts are willing, yes. but we don't know the practical steps. So what's one or two things we can do to be more available for those moments? Sure. Well, let me think of a, let me share about a couple. Uh, there are a couple. So my wife and, Ed and I had dinner with them on his birthday, actually. But um, we just met in church, and uh, I was preaching, and we connected, and I think the world of them, and, and they just are learners. Mm. They're so anxious to learn more about the kingdom and to be used of God. And I don't have half the answers of the questions they're asking, but we have the best time together just talking about the kingdom. And every time we leave, I feel enriched and empowered. And, and I'm so glad to be part of their lives because 
What's better than to be with somebody that wants to grow in God and have their life count and, and have great dialogue around the kingdom? I mean, it's amazing. So yeah. we were three hours together. That's awesome. And, and so just, and all that just started was just chatting in a casual service at the end of a service. And uh, somebody else is going through some marriage difficulties and mm -hmm. I have some training in that area. And they asked if they could see me and I probably met with them 10 or 12 times now and we'll meet mm -hmm. with them more. And it takes something out of your life, but but it's worth it because you just, you're investing in other, in other people. And, and mm -hmm. there's something about the investment that the kingdom, I think, honors. What I'm getting from this, Bill, is sometimes we think when someone says something like, it's really just being available, you yeah. think, that, okay, well, what's the secret? No, it's really, it's really just, just being available. Being available. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, maybe the first step is for us this week just to be praying, like you did with the, the chain this weekend, yeah. and you showed us. You just Is there a cue that we can put out in, in somewhere and then maybe be ready to say, hey, God, help me be available today? Yeah. Maybe that's the next step we could do. Yeah. yeah. I actually pray about this. I actually ask God to give me sensitive eyes and ears to people around me mm. that that um, that if there's something happens that I can be attuned to them and try to focus on them. And, and if you let anybody know that you're interested in them, they usually respond. And if you're one of those people that will listen and be part of their lives, it's not hard to gather a group of people around you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so thank you, Bill, for, for being with us this weekend, teaching us. Um, I, I'm really glad we had a chance to have this conversation because I think it gives another opportunity for us to put a bit more of the feet on what yes. you were talking about yes. um, and so that we can walk it into our lives this week. Um, and uh, if you want to follow along with what we're doing this week in, in some other ways, uh, you can be part of our reading plan. You can uh, follow the hashtag uh, L-O-T-K, like Lord of the Kings, L-O-T-K plan. Mm -hmm. And that'll give you an opportunity to follow along with others who are doing a reading plan together. You can text KINGDOM to our, our church phone number, 416-291-9575. Get daily reading reminders. Uh, this is going to be a very cool summer season together as a church family. Bill, thank you for contributing to you're it this welcome. weekend. My privilege. And we look forward to, you know, I, I think you're, you're speaking a few more times. One more time. There you go. So we'll get, we'll get one more with Bill this summer. So that's it from us for now. And we'll see you through the week or on the weekend.